Precipitation reactions happen when you have two soluble compounds, two solutions being mixed, and you form a solid. It's called a precipitate. It kind of looks like snow sometimes. Snow, the meteorologists will call precipitation, right? And today we're hoping to get some rain falling here to help put out that horrible fire. So here's the example. We've got um, potassium iodide solution, and we're pouring it into a lead nitrate solution. And we see this solid forming, this yellow solid. That's the precipitate. This is a precipitation reaction. The way we figure out what those products are is we look at the different combinations that are possible. So here we have potassium, excuse me, potassium iodide. We've got potassium ions and iodide ions. And then we're mixing it with lead nitrate. Lead ions and nitrate ions. Potassium ions and lead ions will not get together. They're both positively charged. They'll repel each other. And the anions won't get together. The only possible um, mixing up here is the cation of one solution with the anion of another solution. So our possible products are potassium and nitrate or lead with iodide. One of them is insoluble. How do we know which? We use the solubility rules that we just talked about. So if we look this up in the rules, the first rule is that potassium compounds are always soluble. So this is going to be soluble. Lead iodide, we find down the table a little bit. Oh, let's just go back there. Lead iodide, um, here we come across iodide. Iodide compounds are generally soluble, except with lead too. So that's our insoluble compound, this guy right here. And so up here, that's the solid, and this is aqueous. That is a soluble ionic compound. It's dissolved in water. If, if you mix two aqueous solutions and there's no precipitation, that means that no reaction happened. It's not a chemical reaction. It's just a physical change of mixing two things together. And precipitations do not always happen. If we mix potassium iodide and sodium chloride, there is no reaction that occurs. We start with potassium ions and chloride iodide ions and sodium ions and chloride ions. And when we mix them together, we still have those same ions. We have no new solid being formed. That's not a reaction. It's just something mixing. So here are the steps for writing precipitation equations. First, you need the formulas for the reactants. And then over on the product side, um, write down below, well, you'll see when we do it. Um, write the formulas of the products that could form. Refer to the solubility rules to decide if either of those are insoluble. If they're all soluble, you get to write no reaction, be done with it. If any of them are insoluble, then you need to write the formulas for the products, and you have to indicate the state, and then you have to balance the equation. So it's always fun when it ends up being no reaction because you feel like you got the day off. Let's do an example. Write an equation for the precipitation reaction that occurs, if any, when ammonium chloride and iron 3 nitrate are mixed. So here we're getting to practice our nomenclature skills. Um, Ammonium. What's the formula for ammonium ion? NH4. And what's the charge? Plus 1. And chloride is Cl minus. When you're writing compound formulas for ionic compounds, you really have to look at the individual ions and their charges. So what I like to do is I actually start this on the line below where I'm going to write all of my, my whole equation. I write the individual ions, and then I put them together up here. Now, um, is that compound soluble? Yeah, it is. So I'm going to put AQ after it. Plus, and then iron 3 nitrate. Okay, so iron 3 is Fe3+, plus, and nitrate 
is NO3 minus because we memorized it. And I look at those, the charges are not the same, so I'm going to need three of the nitrates to balance the charge on the iron. I'm going to leave a space for a coefficient there. I'm going to get FeNO3, 3. Is that one soluble? Yeah, it is. Um, one of the, I think it was the second row in that table, says that nitrate compounds are soluble, nitrate and acetate. One way to learn those is to try to remember the table when you have to predict these things and then look at it and check yourself. That's better than just going straight to the table. Mm -hmm. That's a good question because there's a screen sheet. Um, this should be mostly the same. Um, the solubility table on the green card, which if you don't have one of those, I can give you one during lab, gives a little more information. Um, you'll be required to know the one that's in your book. So now I need to predict what the products are. What's going to happen is these are going to swap partners. Okay, I think I've talked to you about how I think of um, metals as being masculine. So this is a guy and this is a girl, and here's a guy and a girl. And they both come, both of these pairs come to a party. So two solutions being poured into the beaker. The beaker's a big party. And these guys are not particularly attached to each other. They just didn't want to show up by themselves. And these two guys, you know, guy and girl, not too attached to each other, but they came together. And so they come to the party and they're going to mingle, right? Everything's going to get mixed up and they're going to mingle. And then what we're, what we're watching for is, is there going to be some chemistry occurring between iron and chloride or between ammonium and nitrate? Are these guys going to hit it off and become a thing, right? So how do we predict that? Well, we use our solubility table. So ammonium and nitrate, is that going to be soluble or insoluble? Well, all ammonia compounds are soluble. So those guys are going to be soluble. I'm just going to write AQ over here. How about iron and chloride? Most chloride compounds are soluble. Is there an exception there? I don't remember. Yes, yes there is. It's not iron. But the exception is not iron. So iron chloride is also going to be soluble. Is anything going to happen? No, these people are just going to mingle. They're going to have fun, and nothing's going to happen. This is no reaction. And as if that isn't short enough, we sometimes shorten that to capital N, and capital R. No reaction. Okay, we got off easy on that one. Of course, here's another one. So we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to write the formulas for the ions down here. So I've got sodium hydroxide. That's sodium ion and hydroxide ion. And I'll put those two together, NaOH. And that's aqueous. And then we've got copper 2 and bromide. And so that's going to be CuBr2. I don't know why I did that. Br2. And that's also aqueous. And now we have to look and see what's going to happen when these ions get to the party and start mingling. Copper and hydroxide, sodium and bromide. Well, sodium compounds are always soluble, right? So sodium bromide is going to be soluble. What about copper and hydroxide? The table says that hydroxide compounds are generally insoluble, with a few exceptions. And you'll notice that copper is not one of the exceptions. So this is a solid. So what this means is that copper and hydroxide are going to form a solid. 
in this party in my fantasy world I call Mrs. K's chemistry land, um, this is equivalent to these guys meeting at this party and they're just like smitten with each other and they disappear to the couch on the back porch and they're like making out, right? And nobody else sees them. They don't mingle, they're not part of the party anymore. They're at the bottom of the beaker. They're off by themselves. So that tells us that there is a chemical reaction that occurs. So now what we need to do is we need to write the formulas for these products. We have all the ions listed out here with their charges. So we just need to pair them up in their new configuration. We're going to put sodium with bromide. So I'm going to write that out down here. Na plus Br minus. And I look at the charges. And so that's NaBr. And we decided that one was aqueous. And then the other pair is the copper 2 plus with the hydroxide. And so that's going to be CuOH2S. The S is important, but I ran out of space as usual. Are we done? Not quite. We need to balance the equation. So over here we have one sodium, and on the right we have one sodium. On the left we have one hydroxide. See, the hydroxide stayed together, and so we can balance it together. We have hydroxide over here, and we have two hydroxides over there. Well, I forgot to cross my H. So what that means is we have to put a 2 here. That messed up my sodiums, so I'm going to go back and fix the sodiums. So two sodiums on each side, two hydroxides on that side, two on that side, one copper, one copper, two bromides, two bromides. So there's the precipitation equation. Any questions?